Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 93. Please turn to it. Page number 93 and today is our lesson number 40. Today we will discuss the notion of independent variable versus dependent variable. Let's take a look at the first example here. 2.47 In 2.47 they tell us that the worker gets paid by the hour. Well, if we are told that the worker gets paid by the hour, this is the same as saying, what they are what telling us is that how much I get paid, how much I get paid depends on depends on how many hours I work. Obviously, that's what it means to get paid by the hour. If you're getting paid by the hour, it means how much you're going to get paid depends on how many hours you work. But well, there you have it. Depends on. There is, there is your key. So this guy, how much I get paid, how much I get paid depends on how many hours I work. How many hours I work, how many hours I work determines, how many hours I work determines what I get paid. So how many hours I work is the independent part. Is the independent part. How much you get paid, how much you get paid of course depends on, you see it's the dependent. How much I get paid depends on, because so that's the dependent variable. And that's the independent variable. That's all it is. Now in the, I don't want to make it too complicated, but in the math books, if you want to express this thing in the, in the symbols of uh, uh, mathematics, which is not what is required in this exam, but in case you're curious, this is how you will see in the textbook. You will see that your salary or your, um, uh, your wages, whatever you want to call it, your salary, your wages, depends on, this is how we write it, it's a function of number of hours work. Let me, let me read one more time slowly here. This says my salary depends on, my salary is a function of, salary is, is means equal, is, is a function of, is a function of hours. When you say is a function of, that's, that's the English language translation would be depends on. Mathematicians say, mathematicians would say it is a function of, which is another way of saying it depends on. My salary depends on the number of hours I work. In, in the language of mathematics we say my salary is a function of the number of hours I work, or my wage, whatever you want to call it. That was it. That was uh, 2.47. Let's look at the next one, shall we? I just realized I left my tea upstairs. Blast it. Next one, shall we? 2.48. So remember, when, when someone says A, A is a function of B, A and B are variables here. A is a function of B. A is a function of B, well, is a function of, which that means depends on, depends on, we should also circle is part. This phrase, A is a function of, is a function of, mathematician would say depends on, or rather, uh, many mathematicians tell you that A is a function of, the English language translation is, depends on A, depends on B. Because A depends on B, in this format, B is your independent variable. And A is your dependent variable. There you go. That's all it is. 
for example, if I tell you that uh, my height, my height is a function of my age. The height of a child is a function of his or her age. The older they are, the taller they get. So here, age is, is the independent variable. Because your height depends on the age. Your height depends on the age. This is the uh, dependent variable. And is a function of this part here. This is, this is read as is a function of height. Height is a function of age is a function of is translated into English language as depends on. That's all it is. That's all there is. Keep it simple. Do you understand? Understand it intuitively. Don't memorize the bloody thing. Let's do the next one. A person exercises to control their blood pressure. All right. A person a person exercises to control to control oh I cannot believe my eyes I'm going to write it exactly the way it is written in the book and then I'm going to tell you what I just noticed here because I was looking at my notes and I realized that's not how I had written down here what I had just read a second ago I'm going to write down exactly what it says in the book and then we'll discuss it okay a person we're going to digress for a second a person exercises to control their weight this is how it is written and obviously or rather their blood, blood, blood pressure that's not the point what it is that they're a person exercises to control their blood pressure Listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. Of course, we are here only to prepare for the math part. I'm a math tutor. That's what I do for a living. I tutor for math. For, for all of these things that you see on the blackboard, SAT, GRE, GMAT, and recently I've started doing the T's. Even though I just do the math part, but for the SAT and sometimes even for the GRE, I do actually dabble into the other areas, the, especially the SAT part. I do the English portion, the grammar portion particularly. And, it, and just out of curiosity, I was reading the grammar portion of this exam. There is a part. Actually, give me the. I'll give you the page number exactly. Just give me one second. I'll find it. I won't find be able to find exact page number, but I'm just going to tell you which page I've been reading. I was reading last night. Page one. It began on page 176. On page number 176 is where the lecture begins and it goes on. And uh, subject verb agreement, pronoun antecedent agreement. Yes, there you go. Exactly. On page number 180, what I'm describing here, what I'm describing here appears on page 180. Listen, listen very carefully. Where they talk about pronoun and antecedent agreement. Antecedent, just a fancy way of saying what appears before. Uh, in other words, right here, let me give you a simple example. Uh, my, this is a very simple example. This is so simple, in fact, that this will never appear in the exam because it is too silly, too ridiculous, but it will make the point. Michael is a good boy. Michael is a good boy. They always do their homework. As you can clearly see, this is ridiculous because this pronoun they refers to this antecedent which is singular. Michael is singular. It should be he does his homework. As I said, this is too simple, this is too obvious, it will not appear in the exam, but it will make you understand the point. The whole fuss that they're making about, I'm digressing here big time, because we are not here for the grammar portion, we are here for the math portion, but it ticked me off as I was reading it, just, it just came out of blue, it just came out of nowhere, and because I just read this thing last night, the fact that they make such a big fuss about it, which is exactly what they do in the SAT, in the SAT portion, let me, let me get into a little sermon here, back in the old days, in the days when you and I took our SATs, many, 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 many moons ago, SAT only had two parts. It, the SAT, whole SAT was made up of 1600 points. It was made up of 1600 points. It was made up of math and what is known, what was known as, what was known as verbal. The reason why I wrote down here, with the reason I write down, bother to write down the word verbal is because I cannot pronounce the letter V. Do you understand? 
when people ask me what I drive and I tell them I drive a Volvo, they give me a look. What the hell is a Volvo? Which is why I wrote down the word. Anyway, because the sound doesn't exist in my native language, the, the letter V. Anyway, to, today, these days, the SAT is made up of 2400 points. And there is another 800 entire points which deals with nothing but grammar. I'm not going to write everything down here. So today, SAT is made up of three parts. The reading, what they call it, which used to be reading, which is what used to be called verbal. The writing, the writing is what they were, what, what they're dealing with here, the grammar portion, and the math, of course. The writing portion, the 800 points, they have introduced entire 800 points. They, in other words, they have increased the size of the exam by 50%, having two 800 instead of having two 800 point section. Now they have three 800 point section, making it making the whole exam 2400 point. And the whole reason they did that is because they have found uh, they they found out that in the last couple of decades. Uh, people have been butchering language mercilessly. They, they slaughter it. They do not pay any attention at all about uh, to the grammar. They do not know how to use their adverbs. They do not know how to use their pronouns, so on and so forth. To make the very long story short, the whole point of page 180 is that they are trying to tell you that you must pay attention to the fact that if the pronoun is singular, if the, rather, if the antecedent is singular, the subject that you are referring to, which is known as antecedent, which appeared before, if it's singular, the pronoun must also be singular. And this is their own book. Obviously, the people who write the English part, the English questions, are different from the people who write from the math question. But that does not give them liberty to butcher the language themselves. If you read the question one more time, 2.48, I'm going to write down 2.48. This is the question I'm talking about. A person, a person. The only way a person can control their blood pressure if, is if that person has bloody multiple personality. That's the only way a person can control their blood pressure if he or she has multiple personality. This is wrong. You should have said his or you should have said hers. A person exercises to control his or hers. It should be hers or her. Her blood pressure, not hers. A person exercises to control his blood pressure or her blood pressure, not their blood pressure. It's a person, a person for crying out loud. I don't know how, they, how it went to the press when they are themselves are making such a big fuss about the grammar. Anyway, it ticked me off. Just back to our work. Let's get, to, get, let's get to back to our work. It is on page 180 is what I'm describing here. If you turn to page 180, you will see there. A person exercises to control her blood pressure. A person exercises to control her blood pressure or his or her blood pressure. Well, what they are trying to tell you here, what we are being told here is that how, how well you will control your blood pressure, how well, how well the person, the person in question, whoever the person may be, how well that person will control, how well the person will control her blood pressure, her blood pressure, her, not there, not theirs, her blood pressure, because it's a person. How well, if, 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 had it said people, they would have been different. How well the person will control her blood pressure depends on how much she exercises. That's what I have to tell you. How well this person, how well this person will control her blood pressure depends on how much she exercises. There you go. It depends on how much she exercises. It depends on. It depends on this part. How much you exercise. How much you exercise is the independent variable. And how well you control how well you control, that's your dependent variable. That's all. Let's see how, the, how they put it here. In this situation, I'm going to read it verbatim here as it appears in the book. Uh, in a situation in which the data, oh, sorry, this is a different one. The blood changes, there you go. The blood pressure changes depends on the amount of exercise. There you go. The blood pressure changes. How well you control your blood pressure depends on how much you exercise. Therefore, the blood pressure is dependent on, uh, is a dependent variable. Therefore, the blood pressure, blood pressure, how well you control your blood pressure is a dependent variable. Right here is a dependent variable. 
and the amount of exercise that you do is the independent variable. That's all there is. I was planning to do a lot more than that instead of just two simple problem here, but I realized that I have been uh, flapping my gums for a while now, and the video has probably gotten much longer than I had anticipated it to be. So we can have to end it here. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.